Good morning, guys. Uh, this is the continuation of chapter four on moment and statics. And now we should start by the cross product. Now, in order to understand the cross product, we should first make the comparison between the cross product and the dot product that we talked about in chapter three. Okay, so basically, guys, the first difference is the name, because the dot product is a scalar product. It could also be called scalar product. So it is called a scalar because, in fact, the answer should be a scalar answer, a positive or negative answer. Now, the cross product is also called a vectorial product. And this is because the answer of the cross product is a factor. Okay, now what about the symbol? For that product, the symbol is dot, like for example, a vector dot b vector. Now for the cross product, like its name, it is a cross, a cross b. In the magnitude, the scalar product has a magnitude of A times B times cosine, the angle between them that I will call here theta. While for the cross product, the magnitude is A dot B dot, dot, uh, times sine theta. You know, what's the direction of the dot product? Take 30 seconds and think about the direction of the dot product. There is no direction of that product. Because basically, as we said, that product is a scalar product. So the answer is a scalar value. That's why there is no direction for the dot product because it is not a vector. Now, since the cross product answer is a vector, then it should have a direction. Now, what is the direction of the cross product? It is basically perpendicular to the plane composed of a vector and b vector. And the sense of this factor is following the right hand rule. Okay, now, is the dot product commutative? In fact, yes, because a dot b is equal to b dot a, which is not the case of the cross product because, in fact, a dot b is equal to minus b dot a. How to prove this? First of all, for the dot product, a dot b is equal to b dot a because, in fact, if I go to the trigonometry circle, and if I assume that theta is equal to 30 degrees, then minus theta is this angle right here, which is basically 330 or 2 pi minus 330. So this is basically minus theta. So if cosine 30 is equal to radical 3 over 2, then cosine minus 30 is also equal to radical 3 over 2. Sine 30, which is given by y axis, is equal to 1 over 2, while sine of minus 30 is equal to minus 1 over 2. Which means, guys, that a dot b that is equal in magnitude to a times b times cosine theta is also equal to b dot a, which is equal to a dot b dot cosine of minus theta. Because cosine of minus theta is equal to cosine of theta while sine of theta is not equal to sine of minus theta, it is basically equal to minus the sine of minus theta. So from here comes the sine here. This is first. 
I can also analyze this answer here using the right hand rule because in fact if this is x and this is y then this should be z or if this is a and this is b using the right hand rule this will be c that is equal to a cross b because the cross product is given using the direction of the cross product is given using the right hand rule so if this is a cross b it is equal to c towards me now let's do minus a cross b this is minus a b is always upward and then the answer will be towards u which means it is minus the answer of a cross b sorry for the mistake here it is a cross b minus b cross a okay now is the dot product distributive yes because in fact a dot b plus c in vector of course is equal to a vector dot b vector plus a vector dot c vector and this is the same for the cross product so this, the cross product is also distributive For what theta the dot product is maximum? The dot product is maximum in case of cosine theta is equal to 1 because this is the maximum of cosine. And this is basically true if theta is equal to what? If theta is equal to 0 or pi. Now, in this case, a dot b is equal to what? It is equal to a times b, because cosine theta is equal to 1. Now, what about the cross product? Now, the cross product is maximum if sine theta is maximum, which is when sine theta is also equal to 1. And this occurs... If theta is equal to what? If theta is equal to pi over 2. And in this case, a cross b is equal to what? It is equal to, in magnitude, a, because this is a vector, a cross b in magnitude is equal to a times b. Or it is equal to the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b. Okay. So for what theta, a dot b is now minimum. It is in fact when cosine theta is minimum, which is when it is equal to zero. And in this case, theta is equal to 90, and a dot b will be equal to zero. So if I have two perpendicular vectors, then the dot product will be equal to zero. Now for the cross product, sine of theta is equal to zero if theta is equal to zero. And in this case, the magnitude of A cross B will be equal to zero okay now where is well, what is the use of the dot product in statics basically the dot product is used if i need to find the projection of one vector on a line that is defined by a unit vector now, what about the cross product? Basically, the cross product is used for what? For moment. Remember, guys, as we said in the first part of chapter 4, the moment is a vector that is perpendicular to the plane formed by the arm and the force and that is equal to the force times the perpendicular distance from this force 
to the point of rotation, which is basically B sine theta. B sine theta is the perpendicular distance from A to B. So basically, guys, the cross product is used to find the moment in 3D. Now, some examples of that product, let's do I dot I. I dot I is equal to what? It is equal to 1, because basically the unit vector I is parallel to itself. Now, what is I dot J? I dot J is equal to 0, because I is perpendicular to J. I dot K is also equal to 0, because I is perpendicular to K. J dot K is also equal to 0, because J is perpendicular to K. And also, of course, J dot J is equal to 1, and K dot K is equal to 1. Now, what about the cross product? I cross J should be equal to a unit vector that is perpendicular to I in the J. So why is it a unit vector? Because the magnitude of I cross J should be equal to 1 because it is equal to the magnitude of I times the magnitude of J times sine 90 degrees because I is perpendicular to J. So the magnitude of I cross J is of course equal to 1 which is also equal to the magnitude of I and the magnitude of J. Now I cross J in direction should be or the direction of I cross J should be perpendicular to the plane formed by I and the J, which is basically K. So I cross J is equal to K. Now what about I cross K, J cross K, I cross J, no, J cross I, and so on. Basically, J cross I is of course equal to minus K because I cross J is equal to minus J cross A and this is given by this commutative law. What for J cross K and I cross K and so on? This is basically achieved by two methods. The first method is basically if I need to find the cross product of any two unit vectors, I should draw this circle right here. And I should put the sign, the positive sign of rotation. I'm sure that the positive sign of rotation is I cross J is equal to K. So this is the positive sign of rotation because I cross J should be equal to K. Now, if the question is to find I cross K, in this example, guys, I cross K will follow the negative direction, which means I cross K should be equal to minus J. If the question is to find I cross, oh sorry, J cross K, now, you can see here, guys, the J cross K is the same, has the same rotation of the circle. So, J cross K will give me I. What about K cross I? K cross I will follow the same positive direction. So, K cross I is equal to J. And so on. Another method is to draw a positive direction going from left to right and write down IJK two times. So this is the first time and this is the second time. And in this case, if I'm following this positive direction, then my answer should be positive. And if I'm following this negative direction, then my answer should be negative. So I cross J will give me K, J cross K will give me I, I cross J here will give me K, K cross J will give me minus I because this is in the negative direction. I cross K will give me minus J because this is in the negative direction and so on. So this is the first part of the scalar product and we will continue later by another video 
more advanced problems on scalar products. Thank you.